Hi, I'm Grace Dynan. I'm a Viz artist with RTE in Ireland. We believe that the RT3D pipeline benefits content creators as well as content producers. And we set out to prove this theory by conducting a series of user studies. We invited industry professionals into RTE studios to take part in an expert user study. Uh, hi, uh, my name is uh, Rock Nakajima. I'm the president of uh, Noidem International. I'm here with Alex and Alberto. Alex is our marketing director and model. <laughs> he is he is a boy, even though he is a girl on the, on, on the screen behind you. And Alberto is our technical director. Uh, we're a motion capture company, and if you have any knowledge about motion capture, uh, there's two ways of doing motion capture for uh, animation and, 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 and film. Uh, one of them is using cameras. So you'll have a whole bunch of cameras, and the person will be wearing markers on their body, and that's how you're going to be tracking. We do it the other way around. <laughs> we do it using inertial sensors. Inertial sensors are the same types of sensors that you have inside your cell phone. Uh, and we encase them into little boxes like this. So Alex is wearing 17 of them on his body. Uh, so those are, those are it. We actually have even a smaller model, which is this big. So that's a, our tiny little system. This is our perception neuron studio system. This is our perception neuron three system. How do you start building a character? And over there, in virtual reality, you can start building a character using Masterpiece and Tavoyo, which are two pieces of software. And literally sculpt your character, build it from scratch as if you're using Play-Doh or modeling clay, and then bring it into the software, skin it, give it some texture and everything like that, all the way to bring it. This character was actually made using that software. So the entire pipeline from there all the way to here was done with the, the computers that we have over here and the software that we have over here. So all the way to the textures that you see on the body, the shininess and, the, and whatnot. So in terms of like, you know, the possibilities, it's really depending on, I don't know what all your different backgrounds are, is, is you know, how, how do you want to use this? Do you want to use it for a live show, an animation, a live show on YouTube, an animation for a cartoon, uh, special effects in your next movie? Uh, but again, you know, the sky's the limit in what you can do with this technology. Hello, my name is Dr. Gareth Young, and I'm a research fellow on the vSense project at Trinity College Dublin. I'm a HCI researcher interested in the design and the use of XR technology, focusing on the interfaces between people and computers. The purpose of this study was to explore advanced user attitudes and previous experiences regarding animation, 3D modeling, and motion capture. This process involved observing, engaging, and empathizing with creative technologists to gather data on their experiences and motivations to use new tools. We also build a personal understanding of their concerns, requirements, and challenges when using this technology in real-world practices. The data we collected will provide VR application creators and XR developers in general with an empathetic understanding of the people they are designing for and their attitudes when using this technology in their day-to-day -day activities. It has been a very impressive um, display of very innovative technology that is improving all the time and could be a very va invaluable contribution to certainly to making the creative process easier for uh, students to learn. Using it gives you a new perspective, like you're actually in a 3D space creating, which is completely different than the traditional way. And um, yeah, it'd be very interesting to see where it's going to go. I feel that students who are not so technically au okay with uh, computing generally, you know, would, f would find it quite enjoyable to create some digital assets with that. And um, as for Tavori, very interesting uh, possibilities for um, um, previs. I can see some very interesting shots been set up with it. And I'm looking forward to playing some more with it. So I come from a, traditionally from a 2D and motion graphics background um, and I so 3D is very, I'd be a novice 3D user so this is a really interesting way to get to grips with it and to be able to see what you're working with literally right there in front of your eyes. We also conducted a novice user study. We were interested in finding out the benefits for first year animation students, those who are brand new to digital content creation. We wanted to find out whether this way of working is more intuitive and easy to learn. It's it's a lot more like, I guess intimate would be a good word, because you can like actually look up close and easily rotate it. 
and like looking little bits instead of having to constantly rotate by like different axes and stuff yeah more it's a lot more natural it's a lot more fluid as well moving yeah. around yeah with the object itself. yeah <laughs> this is so fun well done thank, thank you. you what are your thoughts i really like it i can't believe i know how to like use something easy like i feel really comfortable just doing that yeah and you, you, you did model something similar like that for the uh, advanced digital mod module yeah. that was six weeks long. Yeah. And you've just done something in how long later? I don't know. 20, 20 minutes. It's about 20 minutes. Just nuts. Well done. Thank you. I really enjoyed it. I, I basically made a circle in a half an hour uh, in Maya and I already made an apple in, what was it, 15 minutes? 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. The, if there was an ability to like sense the room or the people around you mm. like because i think it's you know you're in this like world so an augmented reality setup might be better i think that masterpiece would be perfect at that. Oh, yeah absolutely yeah. how would you compare it now to this experience you just had mm -hmm. the vr was much better i made an apple in the vr first try uh, the semi-apple what was your timing there was it uh 15 minutes 15 minutes, about? minutes yeah about 15 seems to be minutes. the average yeah, about 15 minutes to make an apple, 30 minutes into that to not even make a dent. Cool. <laughs> Do you see a future for this in, in model making? Yes. Yeah, definitely. Yes. Like, I, I feel like it's it's so powerful and you don't need to... It doesn't cost much material. Mm -hmm. So like when it comes to that, if you're doing like a big sculpt um, and it's going to be digitalized anyway, like, you know, the way some people, they would do it in clay first to get a sort of a feel for it before they do it in there. Mm -hmm. Like that that feels exactly like clay. So you can do mm -hmm. it all there and not have to worry about like buying clay mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. Cool. So in the long run, I think it'd be more cost effective as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should throw one of them in the studio. Yeah, absolutely. We want to make digital content creation more accessible to new users, more user friendly, and most importantly, more fun. We're also interested in finding out the benefits for broadcasters from a business perspective. We're focused on creating assets once and reusing them in multiple formats. We want to be able to produce content for our audience on all of their devices of choice, whether that's TV, digital platforms, a VR immersive experience, an AR companion app for your mobile phone, we want to be able to produce it all within the same pipeline. This pipeline can benefit broadcasters in other ways as well. I caught up with Miles Donahue, a project manager from RTE who is in charge of the design and construction of our XR studio. I asked Miles whether a virtual model of the studio could have helped if he could have seen that in VR during the design stage and when he was creating the business case for this studio. What we did is we built a small prototype with maybe about three metres high and about one and a half metres wide so that we could decide on exactly how high we were going to go. It certainly would have been very useful if we had it at that stage because it probably would have preempted a lot of the discussions and we certainly wouldn't have had to build the, uh, the small model, the one and a half metres by three metres model to do any tests. And we, we would have used it subsequently as well. So for example, when you're designing the actual video wall background, what we had to do is we had to wait for the, ball, for the wall to be built and then put the first prototype in there to see what it looked like. But if we had a virtual reality uh, example of it, we could have actually done all that in advance. Um, and then we, it would have made the process much, much quicker. We would have been able to show uh, the, the stakeholders what it would look like. And also we probably would have had a more accurate idea of what the cost would be because we would have known exactly what the size was going to be. We believe that a virtual set built in VR can really benefit broadcasters. And so in order to prove the theory, Fox Sports have taken on this challenge in the construction of their own XOR studio. Hello, Zach Fields with Fox Sports in Los Angeles. 
we're incredibly excited to be getting into the XR space here in Los Angeles. At the end of January, we'll be breaking ground on a brand new set, which will include a very large portion of the set as an LED volume. With this comes all new forms of workflows that we'll need to figure out very soon. So tools like Tavori, where we can use for previs for directors, they can see environments on camera, what are things gonna look like for framing, or whether that's quick sketches of environments. Those are all things that in the coming months are gonna be essential for us to figure out a pipeline to succeed in this XR set. Hey, I'm Mateus, the co-founder of AnchorPoint. For the RT3D Accelerator project, we provide the infrastructure and asset management solution. So this project is about measuring efficiency, working immersively versus working traditional. To do that, we provide time tracking and all the features to manage your assets, to manage your project files in a very easy and efficient way. All of that can be packed into templates, so you don't need to fiddle around with folders, files and multiple Excel spreadsheets. We also provided a version control system that works with any game engine so that you can see progress of assets in a very transparent way. Hi, my name is Rob DeFilia, Business Development Manager for Media Entertainment at Epic Games. We've really enjoyed working with Grace and the team at RTE as they explore new real-time 3D workflows which have been designed to help digital content creators gain efficiencies across their pipeline. And it was great to see the positive responses from the user studies they did and how interested and inspired the teams were after being exposed to real-time and XR tools like Unreal Engine, Tavori, and Masterpiece. And even more exciting is that these workflows, which were typically reserved for highly technical teams, are now being democratized to be accessible to teams of any size and allowing creators to fundamentally change how they make content today.